Once you have received a positive confirmation that your business has been accepted, you must now apply for an employee identification number or EIN. An EIN is used to identify your business for tax purposes. The form that must be filled out is known as a SS-4 form. It can be quite tricky or a bit confusing at first attempting to complete this form. However, we will go over the form together to give you a basic idea of how to complete it. Each section in the form is numbered, which corresponds to the separate set of instructions that comes along with the form. We will focus on the sections that apply to Divine Pizza Inc. Line 1 is where you will insert your business name. In this case, it's Divine's Pizza Inc. Line 2 will not apply to your business because you do not have a trade name. So in this case, you will insert not applicable, which can be shortened to N slash A. Not applicable will be inserted into all appropriate lines on this form. Line three will not be applicable either as Divine Pizza Inc. does not have a care of name. Line 4A is where you will insert the mailing address of the business. In this example, we will insert 5555 5th Avenue, Suites 201. On line 4B, you will insert the city, state, and zip code, which in this case would be New York, New York, 10021. Line 5A is to provide a street address if it is different from your mailing address. In, a, in this example, it's not, so we will put NA. And we will put NA on line 5B as well. Line 6 is where you will insert the county and state where the principal business is located. In this case, the principal business is located in New York County, New York State. Line 7A is for the name of the responsible party or the name of the person in authority to receive communication regarding requests for an employee identification number. In this example, we will use Divine Fortune as our responsible party. And on line 7B, we will insert Divine Fortune's SSN, which stands for Social Security Number. For our example, we will just put 123-45-6789. Line 8A asks if this is an application for a limited liability company. In this case, we would check the no box. Line 8, B, and C will not be answered because we checked no on line 8A. Line 9A asks for you to check only one appropriate box to describe your type of entity. In this case, we will check the box that says corporation. Because we've checked the box for corporation, on line 9B, we will insert the state where the business is incorporated, which in this case, it is Delaware. In the foreign country section, you can put NA. Line 10 asks your reason for applying. In this case, we can check the first box, which is start new business. Line 11 is where we will insert the day your business started. In this case, we can put that the business started October 27th, 2019.
Line 12 asks for the closing month of the business, which in this case we will put December. Line 13 asks you to list the highest number of employees expected in the next 12 months. There are three categories where you can assert the number of employees, agricultural, household, or other. Under the other category, we can put four. This brings us to line 14, which will definitely be confusing to those unaware of and unaccustomed to filing business taxes. Here you are given the option to file a yearly form instead of a quarterly form if you have reason to believe that your tax liability will be $1,000 or less in a given year. In this case, we will not check the box and we will decide to file taxes quarterly. Line 15 will not apply to you in this case. Line 16 is where you would check one box that best describes the principal activity of your business. In this case, we can check the box that says accommodation and food service. In line 17, you will put exactly the goods you are providing. In this case, you are selling pizzas and cold beverages. Line 18 asks if you have ever applied for an EIN before. In this case, you would check the no box. The section that has third party designee is only filled out if you want someone else to receive the EIN on your behalf. In this case, we will leave it blank. The only thing left to do is type or print your name clearly and sign and date the form. And this is the basic understanding of how to fill out the employee identification form. As with the articles of incorporation, this form will most likely be filled out by an attorney. However, now you have an understanding of the form and information required to keep your business in compliance with the necessary laws. Once the EIN is filled out and filed, the IRS will normally mail you an acceptance letter granting you a new EIN. This is a sample acceptance letter that your business will receive from the IRS. To the top left of the document, you will notice the business name and the address of the IRS. Directly underneath, you will notice the name and address of your business. In this case, it's Divine Pizza Inc. To the mid right of the document, there will appear the date of this notice, the unique identification number given to your business, the form your business filled out to receive this number, which in this case is SS-4, and a unique number for this motion. Directly beneath is a phone number to contact the IRS if you have any questions or need assistance. The body of the letter basically thanks you for applying for the EIN, telling you what the EIN is and the purpose of it being assigned to your business. And as it states in the last line, please keep this notice in your permanent records. As we wrap up this lesson, consider the following questions. Would you rather fill out the EIN form yourself or would you rather place the responsibility in the hands of an attorney?